Does DLSS or FSR cause higher input latency when gaming? Well, let's find out. Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. Last week we answered one of the most frequently asked questions from our audience in detail. Does DLSS cause a noticeable increase to input lag despite also increasing frame rate in most situations? The answer to that was, well, fairly straightforward and expected. DLSS improves latency when the frame rate improves or hurts latency if the frame rate decreases. But it's nice to have hard data showing that now. Today we're looking at part two, which is another hotly requested question. Out of the two main image upscaling technologies, is Nvidia's DLSS or AMD's FSR better for input latency? Once again, I think the reason for this question comes from AMD's talk of how Fidelity FX Super Resolution is a low cost, low overhead upscaling solution. If it costs less to run FSR versus DLSS, then shouldn't that lead to a latency advantage? Well, we'll discover whether that's true in today's testing. My guess, just based on the DLSS testing that we already saw last week, is that it's probably not going to be a substantial difference either way, but the results could still be interesting as a for science discussion, and perhaps there are some edge cases along the way. This will also be a simple video you can point to when a fight breaks out on Reddit or other forums about whether DLSS or FSR is better. Today's test system is the same used for the previous latency analysis video, AMD Ryzen 7 5800X CPU, an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3080 graphics card, and 16GB of dual channel DDR4 3200CL16 memory. I also needed a low latency high performance display, so I chose the Gigabyte Aorus FI27Q-X, which provides 1440p 240Hz with adaptive sync and a processing delay less than 0.5 milliseconds. We'll be testing at 1080p and 1440p today with this monitor providing as few bottlenecks on that testing as possible. Naturally, we are using an NVIDIA GPU here as it's the only type of GPU that allows you to run both DLSS and FSR. Switching to an AMD GPU mid-testing for FSR would introduce a variable that we didn't want to contend with. For actually testing latency, I'm using NVIDIA's Latency Display Analysis Tool, or LDAT for short. We've verified this tool to be as good as, if not better than our other latency testing methods when we tested NVIDIA Reflex last year. Again, this isn't some NVIDIA BS tool that fakes data to make them look good. This is a very accurate device which is perfect for this sort of testing and does help simplify the process of taking hundreds of latency measurements. We're using the current latest versions of DLSS and FSR that are included in the games tested as of this video, no swapping out the DLSS DLL file or anything like that. We've also used at least a 50 sample average for any of the latency measurements you'll see in the upcoming benchmarks. The first game we're looking at today is Marvel's Avengers, a game most people seem to think is absolute crap, but is one that includes both FSR and DLSS. Here we have the 1440p results using ultra settings, and in basically all conditions we are GPU limited. The basics here are simple. When the frame rate improves, so does latency when we are using either DLSS or FSR. This is just a fundamental aspect to input lag. The higher the frame rate, the better input lag you will have. We're looking at frame rate equivalent testing in the area we benchmarked, so something like DLSS performance versus FSR balanced. There was no difference in input latency. And this sort of thing holds true for the other results as well. If FSR is producing a higher frame rate than DLSS, it's also producing lower input latency. And it's usually quite in line with the difference. For example, FSR ultra quality is 8% faster than DLSS quality in the scene that we looked at, for a 7% reduction in input lag. This suggests that in Avengers, when GPU limited, the overhead difference between DLSS and FSR is negligible. The only major difference you'll see here is when looking at the same render resolution. For example, DLSS quality and FSR quality both render at the same 960p base resolution. FSR provides a 15% higher frame rate when doing so, and also produces 12% better input latency. At 1080p, we're CPU limited for the most part when enabling an upscaling solution. The results here are slightly more interesting in that FSR, for the most part, is marginally superior on input latency compared to DLSS. With the frame rate topping out at around 194-195 FPS, FSR produced approximately 2 milliseconds lower input latency than a performance equivalent DLSS mode when CPU limited, so that's roughly a 4% decrease. While this is interesting as a for science type of result, in practice the results are a bit meaningless because there is no way the vast majority of gamers would be able to notice a difference that small. It also remains true that both DLSS and FSR improve input latency over native rendering, no matter what setting is chosen, at least in these tests. 
Next up we have Necromunda Hired Gun. This is a game that performs really well on an RTX 3080 even at 1440p and produces a similar experience to Marvel's Avengers at 1080p in that enabling either DLSS or FSR in the scene we tested basically made us CPU limited straight away. But the results when CPU limited are a bit different to with Avengers. Here, at this resolution, it's actually FSR that has slightly higher input latency. We're looking at 1.0 to 1.5 milliseconds in favor of DLSS at performance equivalent settings. Why would this be any different to Avengers under similar conditions? Well, there's one missing difference that might explain it, and that's the difference in TAA implementations between the games. DLSS always acts the same and replaces whatever TAA implementation a game uses by default. Whereas FSR requires the use of the game's TAA or other anti-aliasing implementation. If Necromunda is using a more costly TAA implementation than Avengers, it's possible that in this game, replacing TAA with DLSS is a net latency improvement, while in Avengers it's a net latency regression. The results are more in favour of DLSS at 1080p, now we're seeing more like a 2 to 3 millisecond advantage to Nvidia's technology at the same frame rate. In terms of percentages, it's a 6% drop in latency going from FSR performance to DLSS performance, which again is quite a negligible difference that will be hard to feel in practice. Next up is the medium. I'm testing here in a very GPU limited environment with high settings and ray tracing set to ultra, so we're GPU limited basically all of the time in the area I tested. This produces very similar results at 1440p to what we saw in Avengers when GPU limited, in that when comparing two performance equivalent modes, FSR balanced versus DLSS performance for example, input latency was also very similar. FSR still has the advantage when comparing at the same render resolution, but that's purely because it produces a higher frame rate, and latency is closely linked to frame rate. At 1080p, while we're still GPU limited, virtually the same results as at 1440p in terms of difference between DLSS and FSR latency. It's just that now frame rates are higher across the board, so latency is also reduced. FSR quality and DLSS balanced are very similar in latency, as are FSR balanced and DLSS performance. It's a non-issue in this title, with latency tracking perfectly to the increase in frame rate. The final game we're looking at today, as there aren't many relevant titles that support both FSR and DLSS at this stage, is Chernobylite using Ultra Settings. At 1440p the game is fairly GPU limited for the most part, but interestingly this game performs a little different to the other titles we've looked at when GPU limited. Here DLSS either has a negligible difference, for example comparing DLSS quality to FSR Ultra quality, or a small advantage, such as when comparing DLSS performance to FSR quality. These are two situations that are roughly performance equivalent, and it seems that DLSS has a small edge, though again, we're talking a sub 5% difference in latency which won't make much difference to you when gaming. Aside from this, the one advantage that FSR has in this title is simply being able to produce much higher frame rates using the balanced and performance modes, so overall FSR has the capability of lower input latency, but this isn't a strict product of FSR introducing less delay, it's more that FSR has a lower overhead than DLSS at the same base render resolution, which allows FSR to output a higher frame rate in that situation. More frames equals lower latency, as has been shown many times before. Then lastly we have Chernobylite at 1080p, and here we hit a CPU limit, though FSR and DLSS act a bit differently under said CPU limit. FSR is able to produce a slightly higher frame rate across the modes, and in this situation that leads to better input latency. Unlike at 1440p, where DLSS was up to 1 millisecond faster in terms of lag, at 1080p it's FSR that's up to 1 millisecond faster. Still, it's just 1 millisecond, so it's hard to actually care about that sort of result. Well, we have tested just four games in this video, but the results are following a pretty clear trend across those four games at two resolutions in a variety of CPU and GPU limited conditions. And the basic answer to whether DLSS or FSR has better input latency is, well, it doesn't matter. The differences between one or the other, they're so small that you'll never be able to tell which has the lower input latency, assuming that both are able to produce a similar frame rate. The latency decrease you get from either FSR or DLSS is so heavily tied to frame rate, and ultimately, as expected, that's really all that matters. I think a lot of people have been asking us to look into this because they desperately want another battleground between NVIDIA and AMD. NVIDIA fanboys want DLSS to be the best ever technology with the lowest latency, while AMD fanboys want FSR to be the best ever technology with the lowest latency, but this simply isn't the right battle. Yeah, you can fight over, say, image quality or performance or something like that, but input latency, 
not relevant, I'm afraid. Aside from the differences being irrelevant in practical use cases, there are some sort of interesting results from a for science perspective. In most situations when GPU limited, there appears to be virtually no difference at all between DLSS and FSR, but when CPU limited, it can go either way by a couple of milliseconds. I suspect a byproduct of differing TAA implementations between games, which are required for FSR but bypassed by DLSS. We also found that FSR does have a latency advantage at the same render resolution as DLSS due to its lower overhead, but that's only because FSR also provides a higher frame rate, not because of any other inherent delays in the processing techniques. Ultimately though, while there can be a difference between FSR and DLSS when CPU limited, the results just aren't that relevant. There's not much point using FSR or DLSS for a small or zero performance gain, which is most often the case when using these techniques under a CPU limit. Sometimes performance will even go backwards compared to native rendering, which usually has superior image quality as well, especially at 1080p and 1440p, which we tested today. This makes both DLSS and FSR not that useful for competitive latency sensitive gaming at a high frame rate. So once again, we're back in a situation where the real things that matter between FSR and DLSS are all the things we talked about in our initial analysis video. Things like image quality, overall performance, ease of implementation, availability in games, and compatibility across GPU hardware. Not much has changed since our initial videos in terms of our opinion on those things. I guess it's good to see FSR adoption increasing at perhaps a better rate than I expected, but a lot of the quality differences between the techniques are very similar to what we first showed. For example, in Chernobylite, I think FSR is pretty trash, but it's competitive with DLSS in the medium, depending on the quality settings and resolution, and of course, similar sort of things that we've seen in other tiles as well. Anyway, that's it for this look into DLSS versus FSR input latency. Unfortunately, not the most exciting results that we've ever seen, but I think it's still important to occasionally show results that don't show a difference because that's still going to give you valuable information when it comes to comparing these two techniques. If you're interested in supporting our testing, consider subscribing to our channel and also our Patreon Float Plane accounts. Links to those are in the description below. You get access to monthly live streams, behind the scenes videos, uh, our Discord community, all that sort of thing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>